I am standing in the landing, the new log landing at Little Hogback Community Forest. It has not been graded yet, um, but Lucas Nizen, the excavator who's working on it, has done a bunch of work on the trails. I'm just going to take a short walk up the, what will be the main access trail from the new landing to connect to our old trail network. You can see he's done a fair amount of digging on the sides here to level this out. So it's hard to even drive a tractor on, let alone anything else. Um, so he's done a real nice job roughing this in so far. That edge there is probably dug down about six feet or more down to make it level. Nice gentle grade going up here. We shouldn't have erosion problems on this stretch because um, it'll be easy to make the water run off the side rather than down the middle of the road. I believe all of this was laid out for a 7% maximum grade. And here we are connecting back on to the old trail which came out from the northeast corner of our old log landing which was really too small to do much logging work on, at least to work efficiently. Couldn't get a log truck into it so you had to load out in the road. So this is the trail back to the old landing and the existing trail that led up from it. So I walked a little ways up that old access trail. We're still on that northeast access trail from the old landing. Um, just wandering up a bit. This was a section that was maybe a little steep but we decided to leave it and keep using it because we didn't really see any signs of erosion problems on it. Rather than the alternative was to clear off to the side and reduce the grade a bit. But we decided not to mess with that and just use this for now and see how it holds up. I think it'll do fine. So then we're coming up to where there was a rather tight hairpin turn here. And Lucas is widening that out into an area that we had cleared some trees for him to work. So it used to head straight ahead here, right up to that little lip you see at the other end of where he's been digging. He swung wide, borrowed some dirt from the hide side. So swinging wide should give Plenty of room. That's a few of the trees and logs we knocked out of his way. He really did quite a bit of building up here. The butt of this log, which is about eight feet below me now, um, used to be laying right on the ledge, on the level of the old ground. I had thought we were going all the way down into this spot below here, which is why we cleared it. I guess not. So it should be a good bit of room to turn around. And then we rejoin the original trail, which has just had a minor little bit of work, widening it in some of the tight spots and smoothing things out. Here's a spot where he leveled off some of the side hill that was on it. So in this spot, the trail took a big dip down. It used to follow all the way to the left here. Um, 
down at the level where you can see a little undisturbed ground over there. So we cleared some trees on the right-hand side of the path and Lucas dug out and borrowed some dirt there to level and build up the little dip in the trail, reducing the steep upgrade we had at the end of this little dip. It's a nice looking white oak, which was at one point marked to remove. Uh, one of our members is working with the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum, thought they might be interested in that one for some of their shipbuilding. So we left it alone for now. It did get a few of its roots dug out, so it will probably be coming down before too long, but we'll wait till they're ready to use it for that. Here we are just about 20 yards beyond the white oak back there. The trail used to take off to the right up here. There was a steep climb and some odd turns and twists that made it not very useful for the logging. So we rerouted it, cleared a few trees along here, and again, make, aiming for that 7% grade for easy erosion control. There will eventually be some broad-based dips installed here uh, as erosion control measures, but that'll be done after he's finished roughing everything in. New section of the trail that bypassed that twisty and turny place. Here's where it joins back in. You can see the trail that's being abandoned up that way. And it used to come right through and down a steep, far too steep grade here. We do have some water bars in it, but it was just too steep to be something that we'd reliably use for recreational and hiking because too much use and it would start seeing erosion. So again, a detour. Um, and we'll come out and join what used to be the main access trail coming from the old log landing. <clears throat> so this was would have been quite the hairpin turn had we stayed with the old trail right here. But what we did, the old trail, I'm gonna scoot to the side here, scoot it up just to the right of the cleared area here. And what we did, rather than scooting there, which would have made a tight hairpin turn coming out this new bypass right up there and turning right up around the thing, we widened it out, trying to make more of a sweeping turn around the edge here. And joining back into our original main access trail. So the new work that was being done stops at this point until we get up this old main access trail to a point where we made a new trail splitting off, introducing a couple switchbacks to keep the slope low. This little section of trail is steeper than we would like, but there was really no other good way to get up here. So we've got some water bars. We put some rock in there to help keep them from blowing out in hard rains. And as you can see, they're not too far apart, probably 20 yards between them. Another one, another one, another 20 yards up. And it seems to be doing the trick. We have not had erosion problems on this stretch of trail. A water bar is a little more severe than a broad-based dip. So some of our vehicles coming up here for firewood have a little more trouble getting through some of these than they would if we were able to put a broad-based dip. But they just don't work well on sections of trail this steep. There's Lucas in his excavator 
working on a switchback for that new trail. Old trails here. We'll make a place for people to swing wide here. And after you come wide, plenty of room to turn the bend here. Now guys who are skidding and dragging logs here might not appreciate that sharp a turn. You'd end up using this tree as a bumper tree coming around. We try to minimize skidding and forward the logs out on wheeled vehicles. Um, I'm not sure what the equipment is that'll come to this job this time around. But the section that Lucas is working on now, let me zoom in a bit, had such a steep side hill that I could not run my tractor down it, even with lots of low center of gravity and lots of ballast low to keep it down. I tried a, running my coot, an old antique ATV across it. It had no trouble driving, but if there were any leaves on the ground, it would just slide sideways across the ground. So we gave up accessing that and uh, um, just cleared the trees, got out anything we could reach with my winch and the rest we left on the ground in easily managed sections for Lucas to pull out of the way. This is Lucas from the other side. You can't really tell the side slope here, but it's fairly dramatic. I'm staying out of his way so as not to slow him down. But it struck me that we didn't have a lot of the before pictures. So here's a stretch of trail. that we cleared a while ago. A lot of brush coming back up through it. The area I'm walking in now, we were able to reach with the logging winch on my tractor, so we didn't have to drive up it. Um, all 230 feet of cable on the winch, a 20 foot chain on the end, and the last logs we pulled out, we dropped the tree toward the tractor so we could grab the top and pull it out. Then as you get into where you see these larger trees lying across the trail, that was beyond what we could reach with my tractor and winch. And this part was not really drivable. So in this area, it's a bit of a mess but our focus was on getting things down and cutting them into chunks that would be really easy for the excavator to toss aside if they were in his way. Once the trail is in, we'll come back and pick up anything that wasn't buried and used in the trail construction for firewood. Some of them might make a good saw log, but um, we haven't found people really interested in onesie twosies of hardwood logs. So I'll take a measurement. I'll stop here and take a measurement of the side slope. So I just took a measurement. Some of this, it's really hard to see here, but some of this was a 55% grade on the side slope here. It's one of the reasons I couldn't run equipment up here. I'm sure this will all get dealt with and made much more passable once Lucas gets through here. This corner is an area that's pretty far back in and was sort of a pain in the neck to even get all chainsaws up to to work let alone get anything in here to move things back out. You can see we've got a lot here for him to deal with. Um, what I ended up doing was driving Brutus up a neighbor's trail, which 
you might be able to see through the trees there. It runs left and right at the bottom of that little dip. Um, Brutus or a tractor was about the only thing you'd be able to drive up that trail, but I'd park it maybe 30 yards away, 40 yards away, and just carry what gear in I needed for felling trees in this area. Quite a pile of them down and in the way. It's like a game of pickup sticks. And that's where I'm going to stop recording for the day.